Putting man with machine to rehabilitate patients who would otherwise not be able to walk or move. And that's what's being done with the use of robotic exoskeletons. And these are external skeletons that support and protect the body. That's right. Singapore's National University Health System is leading Asia's first clinical study on the use of such exoskeletons in rehab. And to tell us more, Here's the head of the study, Dr. Effie Chu. And patient Henry Tan, who has congenital muscular dystrophy and is also recovering from a stroke he suffered last year. So, you know, thank you very much for coming onto the show. Henry, first of all, let me um, tell us a little bit more about, um, you know, the condition, your condition, and also why did you decide to take part in this study? Okay. Well, I have muscle dystrophy. Yeah. It's congenital, it's uh, in the genes. Uh, so, on the day one, I was there, but it's something that's progressive. So when I was born, I was probably 99% of the function as a normal baby. But with each passing year, some muscles give up the ghost. They don't work any properly. And so with that, with each day, I, I kind of lose some function. But it was slow initially. So in the school days, university days, I played a lot of sports and everything else. But once I started working, it started kicking in. I started limping more and more. And it got worse and worse until, well, just before my stroke last year, um, I was barely walking. Mm. In fact, my walk was a very compensated walk. It's a very funny kind of walk. I leaned forward very much my right, uh, leaned on my stick, propped my leg up on my left leg out, then swung my right leg around right over while leaning on my stick. So then I was barely walking, so I was coming to use a wheelchair more and more. Then in October, I had a stroke, and so I was in hospital. <laughs> right. And then, so that, that, that's the reason why you decided to take part um, in the study, because it was available for okay, you. Okay, yes, it was available. I had to undergo rehab. And during rehab, I met some excellent therapists, and one of them suggested, well, I would like to try this. So I said, yes, and yeah. And, and now that you, you, you've, you've tried it, you, you're actually having it on right now. I'm not right, sure if the, right. the cameras can actually see it because it's, it's black, yeah. uh, but we'll have a closer look at it later on in the show. Um, now that you have, you've had it on, how has it helped uh, your rehab? And are there particular features that perhaps you find particularly useful? Okay, tremendously. Okay, I think when I first started rehab, the first the protocol after of a stroke patient get him walking as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. So they tried to get me up, they put me on those various frames, and I couldn't do it because I learned to walk differently. So I was really struggling, and, um, and I was going all over the place. Then we realized that because I've been compensating for 30, 40 years, they had to re retrain me from start. Mm. So now I've relearned just how you lift your leg. Some muscles have not been used for 20, 30 years. So it was a mess, and it's really slow. But when we put me on this machine, Okay, after the initial first day, which was really a struggle, uh, after that, things moved very fast. Okay, can you show us, you know, um, how, how it's actually done? Well, do you like to need a therapist? Yes, okay. of course. Well, can I explain a little first why, what really happens? I've learned during my, during my stay in hospital that um, walking is a very complicated thing. Dozens of muscles come into play. But it's easy to learn. So easy that a baby learns it without a teacher. Mm -hmm. The big reason is because we have those instincts built in us. But when you have a stroke or you have a massive brain damage or a spinal cord injury, you lose those instincts. In my case, because I was compensating for 30 years, uh, each time muscle failed, I compensated, I overrode my instincts right. because I couldn't walk that way. And a lot of this is, is based on both therapist and, and patient. You know, it's a, it's a joint effort. And, yes. and yes. Dr. Chu, perhaps you'd like to chime in here. Mm -hmm. How has the technology really helped the work in this regard uh, from the, the therapist's perspective? Uh, and you can, you can just tell us that just as, as, as we set Henry up. Sure. I'm just uh, representing the therapist over here. Mm. So um, the technology actually yep. helps very much in being able to deliver the, in, the, in terms of intensity as well as the quality of the movement right. that uh, we can see here. So whereas in the old style, traditional style of rehabilitation, mm. the therapist would be assisting very physically mm. the movement of the right. legs um, and a lot of effort will be um, uh, spent over there. Mm. Um, now they can actually focus more on the quality of the gait. So they can actually look at um, uh, how the patient is interacting with the machine. They can get real-time feedback from right. the machine to be able to make final adjustments to the gait. Yep. The quality of the gait also is a lot better. Um, as opposed to um, physically having the therapist assist with the, the walking. Sure. Right. Um, because the trajectory that you see over here, 
mimics walking a lot more um, closely mm. as compared to what the therapist is able to do just on their own. And that, and that, and that resemblance to, to, normal, uh, to a normal gait is quite crucial to it the is. rehabilitation. It is. So who are some of the patients that would benefit most from the um, exoskeleton uh, you know, device that you have here? So predominantly it's used for neurological diseases. So, and, and, and we're looking at patients who are closer to the time of their injury, so more acute uh, phases of their recovery. Mm. So patients such as for stroke, for spinal cord injury patients, those are the, uh, the indications that we use mm. it mainly for. So Henry, just as, 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 yep. as you're, 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 you're doing that, can you just give us a sense of, of how it feels to, to have it on? Firstly, I mean, is it, is it heavy? Is it comfortable? No, it's not heavy. It mm. supports itself. It's actually supporting me. Okay, I have difficulty standing straight without this, this back. But once I'm there, because of the servos and the sensors and frame, it mimics the action of the muscle. It pulls me up straight. Okay. Mm. And so are you able to, log, to actually walk long distances or is there a time frame you know, to a certain um, amount of time and then you have to you know, um, sit okay. down? Um, there is a limit to how long I can walk, mm. partly because muscles have all weakened. Okay, so it, that's the main thing. And because of muscle dystrophy, I cannot push too hard. Muscles, if once pushed, defibrillates, they tear. So I have to watch. I do not overstrain myself. All right, uh, Henry, thank you so much for coming in. Dr. Chu, you too, thank you for coming into our studios and, and sharing what amazing technology uh, is on offer for our, our patients out there uh, today. And unfortunately, we've run out of time, uh, but we'll, we'll still continue chatting after the show. Sure. Uh, for the moment, though, we've come to the end of Singapore tonight. Thank you so much for staying with us uh, this Friday. Please have a good weekend. Good night. Good night.